Hello and welcome. My name is Alan and I'm an engineer in our network security technical marketing team here at Cisco. I'm here today to tell you all about the latest release of the Cisco Secure Firewall software version 7.2. It's packed full of new features and updates that will further enhance your user experience and enable even more capabilities. On top of that, I have a new product launch to tell you about, the Cisco Secure Cloud Delivered Firewall Management Center, available with the 7.2 release, but more on that shortly. Here's some of the topics I'll be covering. I'll be talking about encrypted visibility engine, elephant flow support, and more as part of our threat efficacy advancements. For policies and deployment, I'll discuss amongst other things, the new look and feel of the access control policy, designed to make editing and reading the policy much more efficient. I'll cover VXLAN and virtual clustering support in the virtual and platform section, as well as a whole host of other capabilities that the 7.2 release brings. Before I begin with the main content, here's a reminder that you may be seeing a few new product names or terms that you might not be familiar with. The firewall product line is aligning with the overall security business brand. So from now on, you'll see things like Cisco Secure Firewall Management Center instead of Firepower Management Center. Although the good news there is that you can still call it FMC. Firepower Threat Defense becomes Secure Firewall Threat Defense, ASA becomes Secure Firewall ASA, and so on. The products themselves remain the same, just the names have changed. Security programs only succeed with efficiency. Forrester Research reports that recent Cisco firewall management enhancements have reduced the time required to perform routine management tasks by up to 80%. Cisco now boosts productivity further with a new software as a service version of its popular firewall management center. Now that we take care of the infrastructure, updates and ensure uptime, you have more time to focus on your work. The new Cloud Delivered Firewall Management Center offers the same look, functionality and workflow as the on-premises and virtual versions of the Firewall Management Center. Now you can manage your firewall policies from anywhere in the world, while Cisco takes care of maintenance tasks and ensures uptime. The Cloud Delivered Firewall Management Center is embedded within Cisco Defense Orchestrator, which centralizes the management of multiple Cisco security services into a single platform. What we're delivering over this and subsequent releases is a unification of our cloud and on-prem management stories. Our cloud management platform is Cisco Defense Orchestrator. Our on-premise management platform is FMC. CDO is our cloud manager across the overall portfolio. It manages secure firewall, ASA, Meraki, MX and Umbrella. FMC traditionally has been the manager for secure firewall threat defense. What we're doing now is providing a consistent user experience across Firewall Management Center and Cisco Defense Orchestrator. With the same features and functionality supported, the same policy, config, and analytics, that way you can deploy on-premise or in the cloud with equivalent capability. You can migrate easily from on-prem to the cloud, and either the cloud or on-prem managers can leverage multiple services, such as SecureX for XDR capabilities, multi-cloud controllers for dynamic policies, and security analytics and logging for extended eventing and logging. You'll now have true flexibility of management consumption. Whether as an organization you choose to stay on-premise and, and deploy the traditional FMC, whether that's because of security concerns or whether that's down to regulatory compliance, um, you've got the ability to continue to deploy FMC in, in exactly the same ways that you have done up to now. For customers that might want to start to move to the cloud, but not necessarily go all in, we have the ability to provide the configuration from the cloud, so a hybrid approach. This way, our, your, or the customer's analytics and event storage we can remain on-premise, but all of the configuration elements can be done via the uh, cloud-delivered firewall management center in the Cisco Defense Orchestrator platform. And for customers that may have a cloud-first approach, they can take the full software-as-a-service solution. And that allows us to put in the configuration, the analytics, and the event storage, all delivered and hosted from the cloud environment. Now, as you may be aware, we've been able to manage firewall threat defense devices from Cisco Defense Orchestrator for some time now, albeit with some features of firewall threat defense that were not available. What Cloud Delivered Firewall Management Center brings is a consistent and familiar user experience with that of an on-premise firewall management center and, just as important, full feature capabilities. 
When delivering a software as a service solution hosted in the cloud, we understand that the onboarding process is critical. That's why we've tried to make it as simple as possible. Zero touch provisioning using device serial numbers allows administrators to deploy devices en masse with only basic instructions needed at the remote location to cable the device and provide power. There is also a more traditional registration key based onboarding allowing for a manual process if that's preferred. For customers with existing on-premise firewall management center deployments who wish to move to the cloud, there is a simple wizard-driven process that allows you to move the firewall threat defense devices from your on-premise FMC into the cloud-delivered FMC. Devices can be moved individually or in bulk. There will be much more information on the new cloud-delivered firewall management center appearing on this channel and also across the usual Cisco portals. So please look out for it and don't hesitate to contact your Cisco representative for more information. I'll now go into some of the threat efficacy features of the 7.2 release. Encrypted Visibility Engine, or EVE, was introduced in the previous release of the firewall software as an experimental feature. EVE allows you to detect applications and threats within encrypted SSL sessions without the need to decrypt the traffic, requiring much less processing power and time. In the 7.1 release, EVE was purely in monitor mode to provide the information to reports, dashboards, and event logs. With the 7.2 release, you are now able to use that information gathered from EVE to make policy decisions and take action. Administrators can assign applications to process names that have been identified in encrypted traffic and add firewall rules to act on that traffic without decryption. Client operating system detection is also supported for SSL sessions. And a valid threat license is required for application to process name assignment. However, no additional license is required for viewing process names, threat detection, or operating system events. QUIC is a relatively new network transport protocol that enables TCP-like resilience and the security of TLS 1.3 over a UDP session. EVE supports the QUIC network protocol and can perform fingerprinting and analysis of QUIC sessions and display some of that content of those sessions in the event viewer. 7.2 introduces enhanced support for elephant flows, which are large, long-lasting traffic flows that can potentially cause duress to snort threads. Snort uses flow pinning, which assigns flows to a specific snort thread. This means that a few elephant flows, along with a number of normal flows, have the potential to cause problems when all of those flows are hashed to the same snort core. To help combat this, we have introduced a new detection method that uses new parameters to detect elephant flows. Per flow CPU utilization in a fixed window duration and snort packet drop percentage. These parameters allow administrators to fine tune their policies to detect and act on the elephant flows. In addition to bypassing the flow, administrators can now also apply a throttle action. Connection events have been updated to reflect the appropriate reasons based on the flows detected. And this feature is available for firewall threat defense devices running Snort 3 and software version 7.2 onwards. An effective and highly configurable port scan detection has been updated as part of the 7.2 release. Now, port scan detection is configured within the access control policy unlike in previous versions where it was configured in the network access policy. This only applies to systems running Firewall Threat Defense version 7.2 with Snort 3. Users of previous versions of Firewall Threat Defense and Snort will continue to use the network access policy to configure port scan detection. As you can see, the port scan configuration is now completed within the advanced tab of an access control policy, and one of the three available modes must be selected. Snort 3 provides TLS 1.3 decryption support with the ability to handle zero round trip time resumption with an action choice of do not decrypt, block, or block with reset. Conditional debugging allows matching of common and or distinguished names, server name indication and subject alternate names with the logging of all information used to produce the verdict, the time spent processing the flow, and whether or not the connection was hardware accelerated. Other threat enhancements include support for Microsoft SMB version 3, a Snort 3 toggle during device upgrades, JavaScript normalization support, 
and visual basic macro decompression to detect and prevent attempts to use Microsoft Office documents as malware droppers. More information on these will appear on this channel soon. Moving on to policies and deployment updates, I have a number of things to discuss here, starting with bulk actions on network address translation rules. Just as you can with access control rules, you can now apply the same action on multiple network address translation rules, saving you time and improving efficiency. With the 7.2 release, you are able to delete multiple entries as well as change the state. We've also added support for multiple DNS server groups to allow you to resolve domains from both private and public DNS servers. This helps where fully qualified domain names are used as objects within the access control policy or network address translation policy. A new lock status indicator has been added to the access control policies to show which administrator currently has the policy locked for editing. This helps users to work on the FMC without overwriting another user's changes. By using the user role customization features, administrators can be given the ability to override policy locks in case of emergency. Based on user feedback, the access control policy has undergone a reworking to make editing and reading the policy easier and more efficient. Rules can be added in line, there are advanced bulk actions, and this new look policy can be used on any target firewall threat defense device as long as you are using version 7.2 of the Firewall Management Center. The new interface isn't enabled by default, but it's a simple toggle switch to enable it. As you can see, the new design makes it much easier to see the action being applied to a rule, as well as grouping the matching criteria together in a single source slash destination view. The traffic flow indicator across the top of the policy gives you a visual idea of where in the flow process your rules take effect. A new selection option and drop down action menu provides an even easier way of applying the same action on multiple rules, again saving you time and effort when creating your policies. Once you've made your changes and saved them, a new deploy pop-up window really speeds up the time taken to apply your policy to the target device or devices. Within two clicks, you can deploy to everywhere or to individual devices, as well as get quick access to deployment histories and schedules. Other enhancements around policies and deployment are the ability to inherit SNMP configuration settings from Firewall Threat Defense or ASA devices deployed in the Firewall Chassis Manager for FXOS. This removes the need to configure and monitor SNMP from two locations on the higher end appliances. Support for low-touch provisioning over DHCP version 6 on the 4100 and 9300 series appliances allowing fast, first-time setup without accessing the chassis over a console. And peer-to-peer -peer sync for firewall threat defense devices managed by the Firewall Management Center. This provides a new infrastructure for peer-to-peer -peer communication between managed devices that can be used to transfer upgrade files from one device to another over a secure and reliable connection. For our virtual and platforms update, I'd like to introduce virtual clustering support. Cisco has stood out in the industry with clustering support for physical devices for some time. Now we can offer clustering of virtual firewalls. Whether configuring physical or virtual clusters, the concepts and terminology are the same. We have a number of cluster roles that are applied to members of a cluster, including the control node, which synchronizes the cluster configuration, the flow detector, a predetermined role that keeps track of owners of a particular flow, and flow owners, these are the receiver of the first packet in a flow and are assigned automatically. The cluster control link provides inter-node communication as well as asymmetric traffic redirection to the appropriate flow owner. Each member of a cluster, often termed a node, shares connection state information with the other nodes in the cluster. This allows for seamless traffic flow should a member node fail. Clustering is supported for both ASA and Firewall Threat Defense on the recently released Secure Firewall 3100 appliance, in addition to the existing 4100 and 9300 appliances. Virtual clustering was released for ASA in version 9.17.1 for private cloud environments, and with the 7.2 release of code, we now support clustering of virtual firewall threat defense devices running in both private and public cloud environments. Each cluster can contain a maximum of 16 nodes, and each node requires five interfaces, including the cluster control link. With 7.2, 
I can also share that 16 node clusters with the Secure Firewall 4100 and 9300 appliances are now supported. For the Secure Firewall 3100 appliance, the maximum node count in a cluster is 8. To finish my overview of clustering support for virtual platforms, here is an overview of some of the differences between physical and virtual clusters. For physical clusters, data interfaces have two modes, individual interface mode or spanned interface mode. In a virtual cluster, individual interface mode is applied. The cluster control link on a physical cluster uses a proprietary protocol over IP. In a virtual cluster, the cluster control link uses VXLAN over UDP. And for inter-node communication in a physical cluster, the cluster control link uses a broadcast mechanism to perform dynamic node discovery. Whereas in a virtual cluster, a static defined peer list is required and the cluster control link uses a unicast connection. Amazon Web Services and Microsoft Azure have the ability to create snapshots of virtual devices that keep a copy of a device in a particular state. In order to make it easier to implement public cloud solutions such as Autoscale, Firewall Threat Defense Virtual now allows snapshot creation without the need to have any configuration and policy deployment. Critical IDs are regenerated during snapshot creation to avoid conflicts when registering to a firewall management center. This particularly helps with provisioning for autoscale as an, as an initial boot for a virtual device can take some time due to database installation and initialization. VXLAN, or Virtual Extensible Local Area Network, is designed to keep up with the increased advances in network virtualization. It provides a framework for virtualized layer 2 networks to run over layer 3 networks and helps to overcome the challenges associated with scaling in large cloud deployments. Firewall Management Center 7.2 now supports VXLAN natively within the user interface, rather than requiring configuration via FlexConfig. Generic Network Virtualization Encapsulation, or Geneve, is another protocol that provides a flexible data format over UDP connections that also helps to accommodate the changing needs of network virtualization. With 7.2, virtual ASA and firewall threat defense devices deployed in Amazon Web Services will support both Geneve and VXLAN. Other enhancements in virtual are the support for Amazon Web Services Guard Duty, which can update network group objects in virtual firewalls, the Azure Stack Hub support to extend Azure functionality into on-premise networks. Support for Alibaba Cloud for Virtual Firewall Management Center, Virtual Firewall Threat Defense, and Virtual ASA. And also auto-scale support for both Amazon Web Services and Google Cloud Platform. In regards to VPN updates, the 7.2 release has introduced support for single or multiple certificate authentication in addition to SAML authentication. This allows remote access VPN users to authenticate with both the user and endpoint certificate along with SAML. This can be combined with FIDO2 based authentication for use with biometrics. Mutual secure LDAP authentication for ASA firewalls enables a more secure LDAP binding for ASA devices and helps to further protect against spoofing attacks. This was included to help with regulatory compliance for critical infrastructures. A new VPN listing page for site-to-site -site VPNs has been introduced that enables a better user experience in addition to new filtering options and tunnel monitoring. The VPN listings page allows you to apply filters based on the topology, shows the current status of VPN connections and lists the individual tunnels. The topology view allows you to view details based on the type of VPN you have, for example point-to-point, -point, hub and spoke or full mesh. Enhanced support for virtual tunnel interface VPN tunnels for hub and spoke and root based VPNs means that VTI tunnels to multiple branch locations can now be deployed as part of a single hub and spoke topology. This provides much simpler navigation and more efficient configuration. And to further improve our virtual routing and forwarding support, it's now possible to associate a virtual tunnel interface with a user defined VRF, not just a global VRF as with previous versions. This can help in environments where segmentation or a managed service use case is required. As part of our routing updates, policy-based routing path monitoring support has been introduced with version 7.2 to build on the ability to manually allocate a set of interfaces for outbound connections based upon an access control match. This takes into consideration things like round trip times, jitter, and packet loss statistics 
So that intelligent policy-based routing using path monitoring ensures traffic flows out of the most suitable interface. Link health and other information can also be seen in the Firewall Management Center Health Dashboard. This release also removes the need to use Flex Config in order to configure EIGRP. From now on, EIGRP configuration is achieved via the user interface in the same way that OSPF, BGP and the other routing protocols are configured. I'm also pleased to inform users of our secure Firewall 1010 appliances that these devices now include support for VRFs, including route leaking and dynamic routing parity with the other models in the range. Building on our extensive integrations with other Cisco security portfolio solutions, we now have direct integration from our firewall threat defense devices to Cisco Umbrella. This is particularly useful for customers that utilize both secure firewall and Umbrella. Via the firewall management center user interface, DNS queries can be configured to be automatically redirected to Cisco Umbrella to have policies defined there applied that allow or block connections. The verdict from Umbrella is returned to the firewall and the firewall acts on the result. Following on from the 7.0 release, which introduced the SecureX ribbon within the Firewall Management Center, 7.2 makes that integration even simpler by enabling a single click integration of the SecureX ribbon. Enabling the ribbon also includes the eventing and Cisco cloud support as part of the integration workflow and can help with migration to the cloud delivered Firewall Management Center. More granular integration with Cisco Security Network Analytics allows administrators to configure up to five flow collectors for firewall events. There is also support for exempting specific firewalls from logging to secure network analytics and a new wizard which allows the mapping of firewalls to a default or specific flow collector. All of this contributes to a massive increase in the scale of eventing, location or site-specific allocation of flow collectors and increased redundancy to have firewalls send events to a different flow collector in the event of a failure. And finally, the Firewall Management Center remediation module for use with the Cisco application-centric infrastructure has been updated to provide enhanced automatic quarantining. Prior to this release, the remediation module only allowed a source machine to be quarantined and the quarantined host was placed in a micro-segment within the ACI fabric with no access in or out. Now, a predefined management contract can be applied to allow administrator access to quarantine devices to perform maintenance or take further actions. The ability to exempt critical servers from being quarantined and the ability to quarantine based on source or destination endpoint addresses has also been included. I hope this overview of the 7.2 release of Cisco Secure Firewall has been useful and informative. As I've already mentioned, please look out for further content on this channel and other Cisco portals, including the Secure Firewall Essentials Hub, details of which can be seen on screen now. Thanks and see you again soon.